Hi everybody, this is Daniel Chris from Prehistoric Facts. This is a Q&A episode and we got a bunch of questions today. So let's actually get right to it, shall we? So Benjamin from Hong Kong has got multiple questions. So he's got, is Aristean the biggest Megaraptorian? Does Memetosaurus have the longest neck of all sauropods? Why does Shunosaurus have a club on its tail? And is Tyrannosaurus the best known predatory dinosaur? So to your first question, is Aristean the biggest Meta Megaraptorian? No. Uh, that actually belongs to a different kind of theropod. It is actually the second, Aristean would actually be the second biggest um, Megaraptorian. And, um, and so uh, there's, a other, there's a couple of other dinosaurs. That are, there's one dinosaur out there. There's one dinosaur that is actually a little bit bigger uh, than Aristean. I forget what it was, but, uh, but I'm pretty sure some, somebody in the comments can actually uh, do that for me. And does Mementosaurus have the longest neck of all sauropods? It actually has the longest neck in relation to body size out of any sauropod. And so if you look at Mementosaurus's neck, it is really, really long compared to like its tail. Uh, its tail is not as long as its as its neck. And so you think like, how on earth is this animal able to balance? And so that kind of uh, is a big honking question. But uh, but uh, yeah, it has actually got the longest neck in relation to body size out of all sauropods. And why does uh, Shunosaurus have a club on the end of its tail? Uh, that's always been a question um, in terms of like, why on earth is this the only sauropod to actually have a club at the end of its tail? And so probably mostly the answer is going to be is that it's possibly an extra defense. So if size doesn't always actually work, you can actually use the club and uh, could whack the predator's uh, face, can actually whack the predator's ribs, can actually even whack the predator's uh, legs. And remember, Shunosaurus is actually a medium-sized sauropod. It is not a really large sauropod by any means. Uh, it is actually uh, medium-sized, can actually get close to 50 to 60 feet. So that's the same length as Camarasaurus and uh, would actually uh, have a little bit of uh, bony scutes actually kind of sticking out of of the skin and so I think that's the reason why it actually has a club, club on the end of its tail is that sometimes the bony scutes and even the last bits of the bones of the tail can actually kind of fuse together and ultimately create this kind of club and so that would actually be the answer is that it's an extra defense and uh, could actually injure the predators a lot more than actually just whipping your tail like just like a regular tail whip like say Diplodocus or or a Patasaurus could do but I mean, you get what I mean. And is Tyrannosaurus the best known predatory dinosaur? Absolutely. It is actually the most studied uh, Tyrannosaur, most studied dinosaur. And also, it is, a, it is actually the most famous dinosaur of all time. And, and we all knew that uh, going into the that kind of uh, question is because uh, of the fact is that it is actually the best known uh, and best known and most studied and also people remember its name like crate like instantly when you say Tyrannosaurus Rex do you actually automatically know it know what it is you know and so yeah it is the best known uh, predatory dinosaur all right and then Brendan from Morris New York got two questions for me uh, so I'll get to the first one why the Triceratops, Trichinotosaurus, Carcarodontosaurus, Smilodon and other prehistoric animals never appeared at Jurassic Fight Club well, uh, Dinosaur George Blasting actually was, was, has said it best, and I have interviewed him one time for a podcast, not this one, but actually a different one. And so, um, and he said it's due to budget, and it's due to uh, money-wise, uh, because, you see, he actually had 12 episodes uh, to do uh, for that show for the History Channel. And uh, so he was given 12 episodes, and two of the episodes you know, were kind of different episodes. One was actually uh, kind of like looking at all the predatory dinosaurs that were actually show looking at the bigger uh, predatory dinosaurs that were actually, or the more well-known predatory dinosaurs in uh, the show. And then the other one was actually uh, the KPG extinction, like how could have happened. And I think that one was very inaccurate in terms of like how it was kind of portrayed. But uh, anyway, but it's mostly due to budget. And um, if and I know he said if he did have a second season, he would have had Giganotosaurus, he would have had Triceratops uh, in there. I don't think he would have actually had Carcarodontosaurus though. I think he would. He, I think he did, would have had Smilodon. I think it would have probably been more like uh, the La Brea Tar Pits uh, type of thing, where you have like Smilodon, Dire Wolves, and the Short Faced Bear coming in all the time uh, to eat whatever they could. 
and try to eat whatever they could and then they get stuck, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, that would actually be the case is that. And uh, your second question, will Giganotosaurus, Carcroftosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and other prehistoric animals ever ca catch more attention in pop culture like documentary, TV show, and feature film? Well, Giganotosaurus, Carcroftosaurus, Tarbosaurus have been shown in documentaries before. Um, well, Giganotosaurus was actually featured in a kind of like, uh, um, kind of like a crazy documentary. Uh, it was uh, Chased by Dinosaurs. Uh, Nigel Marvin traveled back all the way to a uh, hundred million years to uh, Argentina to actually uh, find Giganotosaurus and Argentinosaurus, and so Giganotosaurus was featured in there. And also, Giganotosaurus was featured in the Land of Giants, uh, Patagonia, you know, and that that kind of documentary. But I do agree that dinosaur needs to get more recognition and, and that kind of thing. And uh, Carcharodontosaurus was featured in uh, Planet Dinosaur, the BBC series. I thought it was portrayed very well. I think it actually could have used a little bit more work in terms of like how possibly what the science might have actually have of knowing more about Carcharodontosaurus a little bit more. And Tarbosaurus was actually featured in a couple of uh, things. Uh, Tarbosaurus was actually featured in uh, the uh, Giant Claw episode of Chased by Dinosaurs, and also was actually featured in a in a film. Uh, believe it or not, it was actually uh, put in by it was actually featured in a Korean. Uh, film called Dino King, and uh, any of you have ever seen that movie, you can either get it on uh, DVD, you can also get it on, uh, you can actually stream it on Netflix. Uh, it is actually a, it's kind of like a, kind of a quirky story, but it's actually kind of pretty neat. I think some of the dinosaurs are very inaccurate in terms of like the skin texture and all that, but uh, it's actually kind of actually a, not that bad of a film, and so. Uh, and the, so Tarbosaurus actually got got there, uh, got its feature in a documentary and a uh, film. But uh, could there be more that could actually be out out there that actually could be featured in, in like say documentary, TV show, or feature film? Absolutely. There's a bunch of prehistoric animals that need to do. I mean, I like to see some Permian animals in like a TV show or even a, or even a feature film. I think that would actually be really really interesting. Uh, Primeval was actually not too bad of a show, even though it was very inaccurate. Uh, with the animals, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's there's tons of room uh, in, for these uh, other prehistoric animals that we don't that we don't get to see that much uh, in uh, in like a documentary, a TV show, or even a featured film. So yeah, I mean, hopefully we can actually get to see more dinosaurs in the third Jurassic World movie, but uh, we'll see. We shall see. And then Alex from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and. And he says, what, predator, what predators in the Mesozoic era do you think deserve more attention from the public? That is a very good question. Uh, since, we already, because since Velociraptor, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Allosaurus uh, always get the attention, and even Spinosaurus, because uh, those are the predatory dinosaurs that get a lot of recognition. Uh, Utah, gets, Utah Raptor gets a little bit. Um, uh, Deinonychus gets a little bit. Um, even Acrocanthosaurus gets a little bit. Um, I would say probably the one that I would actually choose uh, to actually uh, that the public should know more of uh, would actually probably be. Um, I want to go with I want to go with like say Torvosaurus. I think Torvosaurus is actually an incredible looking dinosaur. I think it should get more recognition. It's actually larger than Allosaurus. I think it is actually a awesome dinosaur to actually talk about. It's got a humongo skull and these very long serrated teeth that that are just incredible to look at. And I mean it's just amazing to see that kind of uh, uh, dinosaur to actually be featured uh, sometime and even the public should know about. And I think that is a dinosaur that deserves a little bit more attention. Uh, some other Spinosaurus definitely deserve more attention like Irritator, Suchomimus, um, some other raptors like Dromaeosaurus, um, you know, and Dakota Raptor. I think Dakota Raptor does deserve a chance to actually be shown in the public because, first of all, it is, it is the second largest raptor of all time behind Utah Raptor. And that is just an incredible dinosaur to possibly actually get a, gans a good glance at. Uh, but, uh, I mean, there's so many out there. There's just so many. Uh, even Dilophosaurus gets its attention from Jurassic Park, um, but uh, I would actually, I'd say Torvosaurus would be my number one. 
uh, to actually uh, have a better chance to be known about in the public. Even even like some strange uh, dinosaurs that need to get their need to get their due. I mean, Majungasaurus does deserve to get a little bit more attention. There's not a lot of people know about that dinosaur besides us people in the paleontology community, like from Jurassic Fight Club or even Planet Dinosaur. Uh, we need to actually. I think the public deserves to need, needs to see that kind of dinosaur. Carnotaurus has already been. Uh, out there with Disney's Dinosaur and even uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, uh, I would actually say that that Abelosaur and even other Abelosaurs deserve to actually get a shot because first of all, people need to know that Abelosaurs have much smaller arms than Tyrannosaurs and so that actually would get them to go, oh, maybe we should make fun of them instead of the Tyrannosaurs, you know, but uh, but yeah, there's so many out there, there's just so many out there, but my number one is Torvosaurus. All right, that's it for now. And uh, next week, would, next week Thursday would actually be a a special episode, so I'll let you guys know what kind of uh, prehistoric animal I'm going to talk about. And I'm actually going to possibly do a mammal this time. I'm actually going to possibly do like a hoofed uh, mammal uh, this time, maybe even a hoofed predator. Who knows? And so, let's, and so let's actually maybe a hoofed predator. I'll actually do a hoofed predator. Um, uh, for the special episode, but uh, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or just go on my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you get your posted questions on the wall or in the comment section. Remember, keep your questions short to the point. You can also follow me on Twitter at CSGRALO. That's my Twitter page. I'm also, I am also post pretty cool stuff on there. And uh, people on YouTube, uh, feel free to leave your leave some questions uh, in the comments section and I will read them all. I will actually take a good look at them, but don't actually uh, try to make your questions too long and don't try to put too many questions into one comment. And so at least probably at least do two or three questions in a, in a comment if you want to. And, uh, and I'll try to uh, pronounce their uh, YouTube, account, YouTube name as much as I can if it's in so, and so I'll give that a try. And, um, and so, but yeah, I look at every single question that you guys actually put in the comment section, and so it means a lot. And so, and also give the channel a like and subscribe, uh, so you can keep up to date with all episodes, and even actually uh, get to see some actually um, pretty cool stuff that we got here in the Colossal Fossils Museum. And right behind me, we got Sarah, the part of Ceratops. And so, in uh, pretty soon, we're going to actually have a Velociraptor right next to her, and so that would actually be really, really cool. <laughs> Uh, to have, and this is part of the uh, Mongolian or Gobi Desert uh, uh, exhibit right here. But uh, there's only one dinosaur here that is not actually from the Gobi Desert that much, and that's Tachosaurus. Tachosaurus is mostly found in China, but yeah, you get the you get the idea. And uh, so, but anyway, and. So, and uh, take care of the people around you. And also, for your younger people out there, to make sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have good education. So with a good education, you get a good job in the future. All right, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next week.